a Melbourne bird hide. I've never been to a bird hide, so that should be uh, interesting for me anyway. And that's the loop we're going in, and a bit farther as well. And so off we go down this way. You see these red markers here? They're fluorescent. And there's a few of them through the forest. I haven't done it myself, but you can follow these fluorescent markers at night. And so you can see the uh, wildlife at night, uh, possums, bats. So maybe one night I'll come down through the forest. You can see the size of that Tuart tree there. It goes way, way up there. Uh, it must be a few hundred years old, I would think. Some, in, some impressive looking tree. This is a bit of a broad walk. There's, there's supposed to be a bird hide down the end of here, which looks out over the wetlands. Let's look in through a gap in the wall. I don't know if you can see those birds perched on those posts over there in a line. <laughs> I don't think there's many vacant posts. Every, just about every post has got a bird sitting on it. Yeah, that's the inside of the bird hide. As I've opened up more portholes in the wall. You can see these paintings. Yeah, there's one there. They basically depict the bird life you would uh, maybe see out on the water if you stayed in this bird hide long enough. That's what you see out that side. Yeah, the rain's come up all of a sudden from nowhere. Some information for you on the brush tail possum. That's just another confirmation of where we are. Yeah, there's quite a few of these information plaques around. It's a little bit more information for you. Yeah, some of the fallen trees take on an intriguing shape. They're almost like a, a work of art in some ways. A majestic looking tree. As I say, it's not as majestic as it once was. I mean, you can see how magnificent they would have been. They stretch way up there really magnificent tree but all the higher limbs are breaking off as it gets higher up so yeah it's a real shame so it's all these fallen logs with the hollows in they're perfect for the possums perfect place to get in there and breed i assume a bit bigger one there no one home at the moment, no. Through here, there's just a mass, as far as the eye can see, of these arum lilies. And the other pesty thing that's going on at the moment with all this green foliage and the lots of rain we'd had just lately, there's heaps and heaps of mosquitoes around. So I'm, I'm pretty well covered up today. I don't know if you can see all the kangaroos jumping around in there.
So just a few more details there about the forest. It's basically, it's hanging on, I suppose. Development all around it, like everywhere else. That's a gnarly looking tree. That's definitely a chew it. It's got a fair girth on its trunk now, I wouldn't like to estimate how long that's been standing there. Now that tree there isn't a chew it. That's a ghost gum. Ghost gum being the greyness of the trunk and at night time, obviously on a full, full moonlit night, I guess that could look like a ghost. Maybe I'll come out one night and walk through the forest and see if it is or not. Not only the lilies around the bases of the tree, you can see some of the bark hanging off the tree there. They're even invading the trees up there starting to grow up the trees. There's another sign there. That's talking about the ring tail possums. And the exact reason for the decline of them isn't known. They introduced feral animals and clearing for agriculture. Well I'd say that's probably about the same thing that's affecting the forest. Feral animals, clearing for agriculture and these uh, lilies now, which are out of control in the forest. When you look down through there, with the fallen tree trunk, it just looks like, to me, that the lilies are one, and the tree's on the ground, and they're starting to grow right over it. I can see us signing out after my short hike through the Chewett Forest of Ludlow not too far from Bustleton in Western Australia. Okay, thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye for now, take care.